Hi there. Today I will be presenting on the utility of micro ultrasound in prostate cancer active surveillance. My name is Adam Kinnaird and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada. My disclosure, I have received research funding from Exact Imaging and will be discussing micro ultrasound in this talk. So prostate biopsy really has changed over the last 120 years. It started with an open surgical procedure, a transperineal procedure that was fraught with complications like incontinence and erectile dysfunction. And then it uh, evolved into a finger guided biopsy. Then about 50 years ago, a transrectal ultrasound uh, guided biopsy. And then it has evolved into MRI guidance over the last 10 to 15 years. Now PET guidance and potentially in the future, uh, micro ultrasound guidance. So what is uh, micro ultrasound? Well, in this picture, this shows uh, the progress that has been made in prostate ultrasound imaging. So on the far left, what you can see is you can see the first ultrasound image of prostate cancer. So you can see here uh, an ultrasound image of the prostate here, and you can just make out some calcifications, but you can't really make out too much of the architecture of the prostate. Now, in the middle and on the right are the same prostate in the same slice and ex vivo, so after radical prostatectomy. In the middle, this is imaging using conventional ultrasound, and on the right, it's imaging using high-resolution micro-ultrasound. And what you can see here is you can see that you have significantly higher resolution in the micro ultrasound. You can, in fact, see biopsy scars from where the biopsies were taken. And when we look at this in terms of prostate cancer detection, what you can see in these two pictures is on the left, you can see an axial image of an ex vivo uh, micro ultrasound of uh, after radical prostatectomy, and you can see the tumor outlined here or pointed out with the arrows. And when you look at the conventional ultrasound, you just can't see that tumor. So micro ultrasound is able to visualize prostate cancers. And how does it do it? Well, it does it by resolving down to the size of prostate ducts. And so uh, in a normal healthy prostate tissue, what you have is you have ducts that are open. So if you do a parasagittal imaging uh, with micro ultrasound, what you get is this Swiss cheese appearance in normal prostate tissue. There's nothing filling the ducts. But then in prostate cancer, if you do parasagittal imaging in this, what you end up getting is you end up getting loss of these ducts. And it's these loss of ducts that makes you feel that it is suspicious for prostate cancer and you would want to take a biopsy through that. So based on this rationale, there has been a scoring system made called the Primus scoring system. It's in its first version and it is similar to the Pyrad scoring system in that it is a Likert score from one to five with one and two being considered negative and three, four and five being considered positive. One and two really just have that ductal uh, pattern, that Swiss cheese pattern, and three, four, and five are different combinations and permutations of losses of that ductal, of those ductal features. So how good is micro ultrasound? Well, there have been several prospective studies uh, for uh, micro ultrasound versus MRI in the biopsy naive space, and they all show that it is uh, similar, so non-inferior to MRI for detection of clinically significant prostate cancer. In my own hands, in a typical uh, male age 50 to 70 with an average PSA and who's biopsy naive, I detect a similar amount of clinically significant prostate cancer, whether I'm using MRI guided biopsy or whether I'm using micro ultrasound guided biopsy. And these are all targeted plus systematic biopsies. There is the optimum randomized control trial that is currently ongoing, and Dr. Klotz is presenting on it in this meeting. And when this trial is completed and reports, this will be the best evidence that we have as to whether uh, micro ultrasound is non inferior or not compared to MRI guided biopsy. So, how is micro ultrasound used in active surveillance? Well, we did some work on this and uh, we did a retrospective analysis to start off with, uh, looking at 128 men who are undergoing either confirmatory or surveillance biopsy. And the primary outcome was upgrading to Gleason Gray Group 2. 
and we found that there was no difference between groups with micro ultrasound detecting 98% of upgrades and MRI detecting 85% of upgrades to Gleason Gray Group 2 or higher. And when we compare the accuracy, so when Primus is negative versus positive, we find a negative predictive value of 97% and a positive predictive value of 34% for upgrading to grade group 2 or higher. And an odds ratio of about 15 for detecting uh, grade group two or higher when Primus is positive compared to when Primus is negative. Now there has been another study, this one prospective and out of Humanitas University in Italy that looked at a hundred men and the primary outcome again was upgrading to Gleason grade group two at confirmatory biopsy. They again found no difference between groups with micro ultrasound detecting 91% of upgrades and MRI detecting 94% of upgrades. And in terms of their accuracy, they found similar accuracy with a negative predictive value of 89% and a positive predictive value of 39% for upgrading to grade group two or higher. So what we are currently doing right now is we have a uh, international trial ongoing called Micro Ultrasound in Cancer Active Surveillance or MUSIC AS for short. And this is a prospective paired diagnostic trial enrolling 210 men from five international sites, the University of Alberta, UCLA, University of Montreal, University of British Columbia, and Humanitas University in Milan. And the primary outcome is upgrading to grade group two or more at confirmatory biopsy. And for this, a mastery program is required. So you have to have gotten proven that you've gotten over your learning curve for micro ultrasound. And we're also biobanking blood, urine, and tumor tissue for genomic analysis. In this trial, men with Gleason gray group one prostate cancer who require confirmatory biopsy are enrolled into the trial and undergo an MRI to which the urologist is blinded to these results. At the start of the biopsy session, you take your micro ultrasound targets, if any exist, so any primus three to five lesions, at which point the urologist is unblinded to the MRI and any unsampled targets that are MRI positive are then sampled. And then systematic biopsies are taken and these are submitted for standard histological review. So far we have enrolled uh, 127 patients uh, in this trial, and 123 have received biopsy with pathology available for analysis. And what we find, the baseline characteristics are sort of a standard active surveillance uh, cohort, and the imaging is very similar in that about 30 to 40% have negative imaging, and about 60% uh, have uh, some positive imaging findings, whether by micro ultrasound or by MRI. And interestingly, what we have found is actually a very high rate of upgrading to Gleason Gray Group 2 using these two imaging technologies. So 46% of men were upgraded to Gleason Gray Group 2 at confirmatory biopsy. And when we compare upgrading by micro ultrasound or MRI, what we find is that the results are concordant in all but four patients. So micro ultrasound and MRI agreed on whether someone was positive or negative in terms of upgrading in all but four patients. And of the discordant patients, MRI was correct in three and micro ultrasound was correct in one. When we look at the possibility of having sort of a double positive or a double negative effect, what we do see when both micro ultrasound and MRI are negative, the rate of upgrading is significantly lower at about 15% compared to about 50 to 60% uh, when both MRI and micro ultrasound are positive. When the two imaging results differ, it does appear that the micro ultrasound seems to be providing more information or more correct information about uh, whether someone has harbors that Gleason Gray Group 2 or more cancer. And then, so where is all of this going in active surveillance and biopsy naive patients and prior negative biopsy patients? Where is micro ultrasound going? So it's currently in its first version of the Primus scoring system. And I'm certain the community will end up making a version 2.0 at some point. But simultaneously, what we're doing by acquiring all these images in an international consortium is we're laying the groundwork for great artificial intelligence uh, computer vision work. And so this is one that was just presented uh, at a conference by Dr. Wilson uh, out of Queen's University uh, in Canada, and he created a computer vision model uh, called Prost and Found. 
And uh, in this, this is where the prostate border is outlined. And then there is a heat map that is overlaid over the prostate in the sagittal plane. And here you can see on the left three biopsies, they should orient you, I should say that the prostate needle comes in at 45 degrees here. And that's what you can see is the extent of where the prostate needle would be. That's what that rectangular box denotes, that there is low risk of finding clinically significant prostate cancer. Whereas in men who had clinically significant prostate cancer detected, which you can see on the right with Gleason 7, 8, and 9, you can see that there is, it's a lot hotter on the heat map. And so you would definitely want to take your targeted biopsies from there. So this is really exciting uh, stuff. And I think we'll have significant impact uh, on both biopsy naive and active surveillance patients. So in conclusion, early observational evidence suggests microalpsound may be useful in active surveillance. Prospective multicenter international trials are underway for biopsy naive and active surveillance patients and will likely be ready for analysis within the next one to two years. And AI-assisted targeted biopsy may be a useful future tool. So thank you very much and have a good rest of the conference.